Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-Level Maths. Here we're looking at the natural logarithm function so we can answer questions from exercise 14G. So what is the natural logarithm? Well where we have the e value as the natural exponential function, the log of that um, base e is the natural logarithm or how we're going to phrase it, ln of x. So it's a log base number of e of x will give you ln. So all of those laws of logs that you can apply work with luns as well. And it's the inverse function of e to the x. So effectively if you were to do ln of e to the x, this would counterbalance each other. It's a bit like squaring something and then square rooting it straight afterwards. You would do the inverse function which would get you back to x. And similarly if you were to do it the other way around, e to the power of ln x to get you back to x as well. So they are inverse functions of each other. Okay, so comparing the graphs of these two functions here, this is what the ln of x graph would look like. So it's one of these to remember for the exam, as is the e to the x graph. And you can see here the relation between the two will reflect in the y equals x line. It will have an intersection point at 1, 0. And you'll see here that you can never learn a negative value because there's no graph on that side of the um, axes. So we can use LUNs and E's uh, to balance each other out when we're solving an equation. So if we want to undo an E or undo a LUN, we use the inverse operation. So in this case here, E to the X equals 5. So what's the inverse operation of E? Well, that's LUN. So we'd get X equals LUN 5. Let's see how it would work fully. So effectively what we're doing here is we're taking the log base e of each side. So you can see here the same operation has happened to the left as it has on the right. Uh, using our laws of logs we can bring x to the front as a multiplier. And then log to the base of a number of that number is going to equal 1. So x here is going to equal log base e of 5. And we'd write that as ln 5. Never, never write log base e. It's always ln. Okay. So once you've got good at this, the shortcut would be just to take luns of both sides and then cancel out the e and the ln of each other. So it would just be x equals ln 5. So what you need to remember here is if you want, if you want to undo an e to the power of something, you learn both sides, effectively that will reduce it back down to an x, and the other side will be learn 5. Okay. Okay, so doing it in reverse now, if we want to undo a learn function, we need to do the inverse function of that, which is e both sides. So to get rid of the learn, we e both sides. Okay, we e both sides, so we get e to the 3 equals x. It's effectively doing e to the ln x equals e to the 3 and e to the ln x that's inverse function of each other so you just get x. So e to the 3 is the answer there. Okay so once you get good at it you should be able to just do it straight from one line to the next. Okay, let's have a go at this question here now. So slightly getting a bit more difficult, more terms appearing here, but the same rule still, still applies. If you want to undo an e, you use the inverse function, which is ln. So you ln both sides, and you get ln of 7, and ln of this side will cancel out the e, so you're just left with 2x plus 3. Okay, so now what we need to do is subtract the 3 from the other side, so this is ln of 7 and then you take away 3 afterwards and then you divide by 2 so you get half ln 7 minus 3 over 2 and that's your final answer in exact terms. Okay what about this expression here so a few more functions happening here but ultimately we're going to undo an ln of x by eing both sides. Okay so the first thing we need to do is get rid of the garbage around it so subtract the 1 and divide through by 2 so now we get ln of x equals 2. What's the inverse of ln x? That's e to the x. So e to the both sides. And we get x equals e to the power of 2. Okay. So it's basically the same stuff that we've been doing with rearranging equations. Just now you know that e and ln are inverses of each other. 
Right, here we're going to increase the level of difficulty quite significantly by introducing a quadratic term in E. So what we're going to say here is that we're going to uh, subtract 14 onto the other side and create effectively a quadratic equation here. We've got e to the x to the power of 2 here, and we've got e to the x in the middle. <clears throat> so what we're going to do here is factorise out um, e to the x into two brackets. Sometimes it's helpful to write this as y, so this will effectively be y squared plus 5y minus 14 equals 0. If we think of e to the x equaling y. Okay, so some people prefer to introduce a y. If you can factorise with the e's in the brackets, just do it that way, so that'll be quicker. So we factorise and see that e to the x plus 7 and e to the x minus 2 will equal 0. So what does e to the x have to be? Well, e to the x either equals minus 7 or e to the x equals 2. Now, we get no solutions for the positive uh, part of this graph here, because remember, e to the x is only going to appear on the positive y coordinates. So we get no value of x that will give us e to the x equaling minus 7. <clears throat> Now let's look at what x has to be to equal 2. The inverse function of e, to get rid of the e here, is ln. So learning both sides here, and we get x equals ln 2. So this here is your only answer to this equation. Right then, your turn to have a go at some questions yourself. Pause the video and see how far you get. Right, okay, well done for having a go at these questions here. So we first start off with e to the 2x equals 11. And the first thing we need to do is do the inverse operation of e in both sides, which is to learn both sides. So learning both sides will cancel out the e, so we're left with just 2 to the x equals learn of 11. And then we half both sides to get a half learn 11. Okay. So that's the final answer to question 1b. Question 2c involves ln of 2x plus 3 equals 4. OK, so we can't get rid of anything inside the brackets now. We have to undo the ln. And what's the inverse operation of ln? Well, it's e in both sides. So it's 2x plus 3, because the e will cancel out the ln. And then it's e to the power of 4. OK, then we need to subtract 3, so it's e to the 4 take away 3, and divide through by 2, and we get e to the 4 minus 3 over 2. So that's the final answer to question 2c. Now notice here that we could have worked out the numerical values to say three significant figures of both our answers here. The reason I haven't is because it does say leave your answer in exact form on both of these questions here. And when it says leave your answer in exact form, that means you need to include learns, it means you need to include e's, it lead, means you need to include square roots if you get a square root, it means you need to include pi if you get a pi in your answer, etc, etc. Uh, minus 13 over 7 would be in exact terms, but what you can't have is no, what you shouldn't have is any decimals. OK, when it says in exact terms or in exact form, no decimals are allowed. Right, OK, there's two sets of questions for this video then, so pause the video and have a go at these two questions. Right, well done for having a go at these video, this uh, question here. So what we're going to do first, I'll show you this way that we can substitute in e to the x. So what we think of this here as is it's going to be e to the 2x, which is e to the x squared minus 8e to the x plus 12 equals 0. <clears throat> now what's happened here is we've just used the inverse rule or the opposite rule of two powers will multiply together as the indices. And what we can do then is introduce y squared minus 8y plus 12 equals 0. Now we'll look at factorising both sides. So it's going to be y minus and a y minus. So that would be 6 and 2. So therefore, either y equals 2 
or y equals 6. Now we can't stop there because we have to now bring back in the fact that y is e to the x. So e to the x equals 2 or e to the x equals 6. So therefore, working out what x is, what's the opposite operation of e? That's ln. And what's the inverse operation of e? That's ln on this side as well. So we get two answers here, ln of 2 and ln of 6. OK, we've got a roughly similar question here with 3c. What we'll do now is just substitute in y equals ln of x. OK, so what we can do here is um, substitute this in for y squared plus 2 ln, sorry, 2y minus 15 equals 0. Uh, expand some brackets, sorry, uh, factorise into some brackets. So that would be plus 5 and minus 3 equals 0. So therefore y equals um, minus 5 and y equals 3. Now in this case here we're going to um, substitute back in ln of x equals minus 5 and ln of x equals 3. Now can we have ln of x equals minus 5? Well yes we can because the ln graph looks something like that. So at minus 5, yes, there is going to be a decimal solution to this answer here. So what we're going to have here is what's the opposite operation of ln? Well, that's e in both sides. So x is going to equal e to the minus 5, which if you think about it is going to be a decimal. It's going to be 1 over e to the 5 if you think about what this negative power is going to do. So that makes sense. It's going to be 1 over e to the 5 could even write that down even if we were feeling confident. And for the second part here, working out what x needs to be for this solution here, what's the opposite of learning both sides? That is uh, eing both sides. So x equals e to the 3. So we get two answers for the second equation as well. So 1 over e to the 5 and e to the 3. Right, these questions are very, very difficult, so make sure you have a go and plenty of practice at exercise 14G. Um, make sure that you uh, persevere through the difficult questions and ask your teacher for help. Thanks very much for watching.